When we look across California's alpine wonderland of meadows, lakes, and peaks, we know that there is one man who explored, camped, rambled, and climbed there more than anyone else, Norman Clyde. Norman Clyde was unreal and his accomplishments are incredible. Once I became aware of this man, I like many, can't get enough of collecting everything, Norman Clyde. So in tribute to him, I present here a brief visual compendium of his undertakings from many sources I have researched for the pleasure of old and new admirers of Norman Clyde. Open any of the climber's guidebooks to the Sierra and you will scarcely find a page without at least one peak or route tagged First Ascent by Norman Clyde. Look down the several generations of Euro-Americans who found fresh visions of life in the High Sierra, and the whole middle half of that legacy is dominated by Norman Clark. Probably no other mountain range has its lore so entwined for so long with a single individual, and one can fairly ask if anyone has ever dedicated so much studied, vigorous leisure to a given terrain. Almost from his first full summer in the Sierra in 1914, when he hiked virtually the entire length of the range until his death in 1972, Norman Clyde's life was dominated by mountains overwhelmingly in Sierra Nevada. The Sierra was his inspiration and his refuge and his home. As the rest of us find our transformative adventures, recreation, and moments of bliss on our vacations up there. It's hard not to ponder the astounding courage, endurance, tenacity, joy, and struggles of the man who was embedded in the Sierra for most of his adult life. Decade after decade, with mostly the peaks, forests, streams, and wildlife as his companions. Norman Clyde's legacy makes us ask, how is it that a well-educated, fully capable man could commit most of his adult life to Romy Mountains. What different stuff was he made of compared to the rest of us? Norman Clyde was endowed with the paradoxes of a full life. He was a disciplined intellectual who had the look and some of the manners of a tramp. He was a recluse who enjoyed the company of others, at least those who made his standard and he was a skilled tracker, guide, and a natural leader. He was a linguist who sometimes didn't speak to another human for months at a time. He was a cantankerous grouch, and he was a storyteller full of laughter for the follies of most everyone, including himself. Most notably, he was a connoisseur and climber of peaks. To the majority of us who know life as a complex of often struggling engagements, and who know the high country as a blessed place for periodic visits. The person of Norman Clyde looks out from the Sierra Nevada Granite as both an inspiration and an enigma.